living things on earth, no matter how big or small, are made up of materials that are primarily based on one thing, carbon. The backbone of our DNA, the very fabric of all living existence, is built with carbon atoms. And these atoms are recycled over and over through time. So let's follow a carbon atom on its journey. All right, so you're saying that some of the carbon inside of me might have been the same carbon that was in a dinosaur? Well, yeah. The carbon we breathe could be hundreds of millions of years old. I mean, it very well could have been part of a dinosaur. It's all just part of a continuous cycle of energy and matter. Since all life needs carbon, life depends on primary producers, which are plants and some kinds of single-celled organisms to convert carbon in carbon dioxide into usable forms for themselves and other organisms. Plants are autotrophic. They use the carbon from carbon dioxide along with sunlight and water to make their own food during photosynthesis. The food source they produce, carbohydrates, are eaten by consumers, such as a caterpillar. Remember, the plant made its own food that contained, among other elements, our carbon atoms. When the first level consumer, the caterpillar, ate the plant, that carbon-containing molecule was transferred to the caterpillar. The caterpillar then breaks down those molecules, gaining energy for its own activities and carbon atoms that can be building blocks for new cells. Now, the omnivorous brown rat is the keeper of our carbon atom. All right, so let me get this straight. You're saying that some of the carbon atoms that we're making in this sandwich may very well have been from, I don't know, a lizard? Or a llama. Or a lemur? Or a leopard. A, a lion. A leech. Oh, well, or anything else, I guess, right? Well, yeah, I mean, your body could use the carbon from the sandwich that you're making to make new cells or repair old ones, or it could become part of carbon dioxide during cellular restoration. And then that carbon dioxide could get taken up by a wheat plant, see where I'm going with this? And eventually, the carbon that you're eating in your sandwich could become part of another sandwich. Wow, that's incredible. It's really cool. What? The omnivorous brown rat will eat most anything it finds, usually foraging in areas with plenty of places to hide. Sometimes, however, it gets spotted before it can find a safe place. This owl is a top-level consumer in its area, with no threat of being preyed upon by other animals. One might think that the owl will have to die before giving its carbon atom back to the system, but it contributes along the way by coughing up a pellet of undigested material, passing our carbon atom further along. Now it is time for the decomposers to do their part in this process. Bacteria and fungi are decomposers, and they get their energy and nutrients by feeding on dead organic material and waste of other organisms. While it may not be a glamorous existence, decomposers have an essential job. They keep Earth from becoming covered with piles of waste, and they break down the waste into products that can be reused, such as nutrients like nitrogen. They also release carbon dioxide. This brings the atom back to a primary producer that will use the carbon dioxide during photosynthesis, releasing oxygen and making sugars in the process. This continues the cycle that connects every organism on the planet. Nearly all life on Earth depends on this continuous cycle. So remember, there's so many ways that we're connected to everything on Earth. Take a look around your neighborhood and draw a carbon cycle for the area that you live. 
write down a list of the organisms in the food chain. What kinds of plants are there? How about insects or herbivores that eat plants? What about predators? Have fun searching and observing. And never stop exploring your world.